I'm fortunate enough to live right by Mount Dandenong and the Dandenong Ranges which as you can see is absolutely stunning there's a real mix of rainforests and ferns like this uh, lots of Australian flora and fauna and also selected spots where there are gardens of European trees so in times like autumn which is now in Australia you get uh, beautiful colours as well so we've sort of got the best of everything right here in the Dandenongs and it's just a very short drive from my place and today I'm going to the Alfred Nicholas Memorial Gardens in 400 meters your destination will be on the right your destination is on the right we have arrived So the Alfred Nicholas uh, Memorial Gardens, just outside Callista, I think it's in Alinda technically. There we go. And we're a few weeks into autumn here in Australia. Uh, it's been raining solidly all night, everything is wet, but for the day it's cleared up. There's lovely sunshine going, filtering through all the trees here. There's some cloud, so uh, We'll have to wait for nice conditions to actually take the photos. But yeah, beautiful spot. If you're in the area, come along. If you're a tourist, make sure you can drop in. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, so again, a bit of an experiment. Got my uh, GFX 50R with the 35 to 70 zoom from Fujifilm. Got the Olympus Seiko 50mm f1.8. Got the Pentax 50mm 1.7 and the Helios 44.2, which is a 58mm f2. So here's the GF 35 to 70 zoom. The Helios 44.2, the Olympus 50mm 1.8, and the Pentax 50mm 1.7. Now we're going to go into the corners. There's the GF lens, there's the Helios lens, there's the Olympus lens. And finally the Pentax lens, very soft and mushy all around. Here's comparison shots again of the four different lenses. When they're out, uh, you see the whole picture, they don't look too bad. But of course, if you go into the corners and have a look, then you'll see very mushy corners with the, uh, the vintage lenses. Because none of them are made for medium format. They do cover the sensor but uh, they're not made to so add on the extremes the edges and the corners they're just going to fall apart which they do but if you just want general shots then yeah the vintage lenses are okay the main thing is the price they're only paying about $50 for each of these vintage lenses whereas the GF lens the cheapest which is the 35 to 70 costs a thousand Australian dollars so if you're on a budget, is it worth getting an actual Fujifilm GF lens? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you will get better results all around. Another advantage is with this 35 to 70, you get a zoom. You get more focal ranges available to you with that one lens. It's also weather resistant. Just about every way you look at it, you get much better results from an actual GF lens. However, if you're not after some of those things, or you simply do not have the money, you can get by with vintage lenses. Just don't push it. <laughs> don't ask too much from them. None of these things are sponsored. I bought the camera myself or bought the lens myself. Didn't get them from any uh, manufacturer or distributor. Bought them with my own money. So this is an actual <laughs> peer review, giving you my honest opinion from the results I'm getting out of using these lenses. So yeah, this was the cheapest GF lens available, the 35-70. The primes cost a lot more, so uh, I went for this one. 
and I must say it gives some good impressive results. I'm not going to send it back, I'm going to keep this. Spent the money, it's my lens. Okay, but whatever camera you got, <laughs> whatever lens you stick on it, pick it up, take it for a walk and have some fun. Bye.